Wow. Now, UW, I don't need to tell all of you those are pretty towering high heels I'm stepping into. <laughs> I was once told, never highlight your shortcomings. But in uh, the spirit of the new purple family that I'm joining, I think I'm going to tell you what I'm not. I'm not Joanna Lumley. I'm not an award-winning actress. I'm not absolutely fabulous. I'm not a dame. I don't have an OBE. And brace yourselves, I don't like champagne. <laughs> But fear not, because I've been around the block. I have a very sensible pair of shoes, Clarks, for anyone wondering. And I do like a dram of Scottish whiskey. I want you all to imagine the scene now. I'm at 8,800 meters on the side of Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world. I'm 48 meters from the summit. I'm in an area known as the death zone. This is a place in which the body is destroying itself. Remember the last time you were in an airplane? Probably quite a long time ago. Imagine you're at cruising altitude and you step out of the window onto the wing, that's where I am. If anything goes wrong now, I'm beyond rescue. In fact, if I perish, if I die, my body will never be recovered. I'll join the hundreds of other people who have died in the pursuit of exactly the same goal as me, to climb this mountain. But I'm 48 meters from the summit. A lifetime of dreaming, years of training, months of suffering, and nearly over. It's within touching distance. I lift a leg and bang! My oxygen bottle and mask explode on me. And my dream of climbing Everest is disappearing, and my very life is in jeopardy. This is it. How am I going to get out of this one? And I suppose more pertinently, how did I end up there in the first place? I just need to rewind a little bit. You see, it may surprise you seeing me striding up and down this stage, but I'm actually quite a shy individual. All my life, I've been haunted by that loud inner voice of doom that tells me I shouldn't, I can't, I won't, I mustn't. And for me, as a child, it was dominated by failure. I failed at my exams, I failed at sport, I failed at friendships. And when you fail as prolifically as I did as a child, you look for other ways. You see, the front door isn't always the only entrance. Isn't it amazing how single decisions we make in life can change everything? Like all of you becoming partners with UW, like me becoming an ambassador at UW. For me, that tipping point happened in 99 when I answered an advert in the paper wanted volunteers to live for a year on a remote Scottish island. It was the birth of reality TV. That single decision to join that show changed my life. For those who don't recall, it was the birth of a whole new genre of television known as reality TV. And I became a pioneer. I don't want to burst your TV viewing habits, but reality TV's changed quite a lot since. This was not the only way as Essex or Made in Chelsea, which have become unreality television. This was authentic and true, and it gave me a love of nature and adventure, but it also built my own confidence, and I embarked on a career of travel and adventures that taught me teamwork, camaraderie, resourcefulness, resilience, optimism, hope, all the attributes that we here at UW thrive on. It's been a tough few years, but together we're embarking on a brand new adventure. You're probably wondering what happened with Everest. I didn't die. <laughs> but it's where teamwork really came in. 
You see, my teammate, Kenton, veteran of 12 climbs, gave me his mask and bottle, and with his experience on those mountains, he was able to make a mask out of an old plastic bottle and borrow a bottle from a climber coming out from the other side. And I was able to stand on the roof of the world, climb the mountain so that you can see the world, not so the world can see you. What can I bring to you as ambassador? Thank you. What can I bring to all of you as ambassador at UW? Well, it's all of those things I've learned over the years. Happiness, hope, optimism, teamwork, collaboration. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me. This is us. This is it.